there is no definitive set of rules when we talk about like how we can build a production ready service however there are some common practices which are followed industry wise and we need to consider many different things when we are planning to develop a service for our customers so for example we need to think about user experience we need to define the api specifications we need to think about high level architecture then we need to move into our low level designs also we need to think about what would be the telemetry setups like how we can collect our logs metrics traces and also how we will be making our services like highly available and scalable and also what would be the region building process and what can we do or what we need to think about after release so these are there are so many different things right so in today's lecture we'll try to summarize the whole procedures which are kind of followed industry wise and we'll try to cover them in 10 different points let's see the very first step when we start building a service is like understanding our customer experience so we need to understand what our customer needs right or our business requirements if you or your team does not feel comfortable or like are not confident enough to say like we know what we are going to build then maybe you are not building the right product so we need to make sure we understand our customer experience once we know our user history then we will move to our api specifications api specifications are basically the contract in between our like customer and our service right so we need to write down kind of the operation names then how to be the request format how to be the response format and how to be the exception models then we need to consider about uh, apis where we might need kind of pagination filtering and sorting we also need to think about like api versioning usually we do up versioning for our apis like it just always goes up if there is any breaking sentence we need to version this api without breaking our existing customers then we also need to think about like item potent operations right say for example customer might accidentally click a button multiple times or they might retry one of the failed requests but your system need to be or api need to be designed in a way so that we can handle these things so there are so many different things we need to focus when we are designing our apis the next step is like we will be thinking about our high level architecture design so we need to determine the number of internal components required we also need to think about our data layer and storage types and also we will be talking about like identify the external services like how many external services our services need to communicate with right to finish a customer request and we also need to think like what would be the sync versus async path of our system and what would be the failure mode for both of them right once these things are decided and reviewed in a team level then we will go into our like low level component design and the implementation part so the first step is like break the high level design into a hundred pieces by this i mean like try to break it as many small pieces as possible and distribute the workload to the team members right and so once that's done we will try to write an in-depth design for each part of the project right so while doing this we also need to think about the service in infrastructure also like how will you actually make your services fault tolerant and easily scalable and after that the main thing comes like consider as many standard practices as you can while designing and implementing so there are many different things you can think about but i have listed a couple of them so for example the data safety and integrity how we can make our data securely stored and transmitted right we also need to think about like authentication and authorization do you have or your company uh, already has some kind of established authentication and authorization mechanism then use them otherwise like how can we uh, adopt the open source things here we also need to think about 400 versus 500 errors We'll be mindful when choosing error ports and customer error messages because sometimes it's really difficult uh, to sense the messages once it's already exposed to our customers right after that like think about throttling like where your services can get throttled versus like where you want to throttle your customers right then after that we need to plan for our failure and retry setup so uh, failures can happen for any reason when we are calling other services so 
we need to retry the retryable failures. So when we'll be retrying, so we need to think about like the backup mechanism or whether it is going to be like fixed exponential or random backup. Then we need to consider caching. Caching uh, increases the performance and latency for our services. So wherever applicable, uh, try to get the advantage of caching and also think about the data backup, data sharding and data partitioning. Think about service health mechanism how can we make sure our service is healthy and running the next biggest step is like when the implementation is done also like in parallel we need to think about testing there are three different type of testing we usually do in industry wise the first thing is like unit testing this is basically for testing the unit piece of functions or each piece of functions or piece of code you are writing within your code and then the integration testing is basically testing the end-to-end -end workflow for one single API, like integration of multiple pieces or functions within your code base, like from the beginning of a request to the end of a request. And finally, the canary testing. Canary testing is basically like to make sure your service is always up and running. We do this for making sure our production ready uh, services are working for our customers and we treat our canary as our real customer so canary always uh, pinging our service endpoints and make sure our service is working fine uh, if customer is trying to reach us and there are any issues our canary helps us to uh, identify them beforehand and take necessary actions then the thing is like telemetry setup so we need to think about like uh, our service health and to identify our service health and to understand uh, what is going on with our services we need to uh, collect telemetry data there are basically three types of telemetry data logs metrics and traces and to configure the telemetry of your services usually we need three pieces of components the first thing is like the logger or the log generator or the log instrumentation process like where we basically generate our logs then the logging agent or log processor comes into the picture once our service is up and running in a pre-prod environment and we are collecting logs and metrics, we need to work for our dashboard design. And based on those metrics, we can set some alarms and cut tickets to our on-call team members. So there are so many different things which we want to observe in our dashboard. So for example, our API call volume, how many calls we are getting versus error rate and latency improvement. We also want to observe our like dependency API dashboard, how they are doing. If any fault is occurring, we need to understand like whether it's coming from our own service versus our like dependency services. We need to also monitor our service health. We need to monitor the resource utilization of our services. And based on them, we can take some decisions like whether we need to scale up or scale down something or we need to take some manual actions. We also need to monitor our like data plan health regularly to make sure everything is working fine. In parallel, we also need to go through some ORR process. ORR stands for Operational Readiness Review. Many companies actually do this before making their services like publicly available. So we need to go through AppSec review process to make sure like we are not breaching any uh, security in our services. Also, we need to do a kind of a bug bash. So basically we do this like with our sister teams or like uh, other team members who does not have enough idea about the product we are building and we give them some kind of like a run book or something which they can just follow and try to test the customer behavior and identify bugs. Then we also go through pen test. Pen test actually the short form for uh, penetration test. This is another kind of testing to identify the security trees and other things. Then we also do another game day. Game day is basically testing the whole thing like a production ready, like pre-prod maybe game environment and also could be like very fast uh, prod regions where you want to test your services uh, before declaring it available to our customers. The next step is to develop some runbook and operational tooling. So many things can go wrong with a production system, right? Anything wrong can happen anytime with our services, but we need to be prepared as a team with the guidelines, how someone should take actions when something wrong is happening with our service. So who is locks to look for and where to find them? 
it might not be always related to our own services it could be with our dependencies right so we need to understand like when to reach out and who is team to our dependency team uh, with their on-call contact support right then we also need to understand how we want to take steps when an LEC is ongoing LEC means like large scale events many services or dependent services are disrupted or your own service is kind of like totally destroyed so what do we want to do how to analyze the customer impact and notify customers right and finally we also need some sort of like specialized tools for taking actions in our production accounts and the final step is kind of think about the release process and region building so i mentioned the term region building here like there are many cloud service providers in market today and they have so many different regions so basically we follow the same process for our services also so how do we want to make sure we are releasing in multi region fashion and everything is being taken care of automatically so we need to design an automated release pipeline we need to think about free prod versus production staging so before any change is going to our production stage and hitting our production workload we want them to go through some pre-prod environments after testing we want to make sure everything is working fine then let it go through the production regions or production instances if anything bad happens we should roll back them automatically that's why we need to implement a rollback on failure mechanism within our pipeline we need to minimize the blast radius with a multi-wave release process and vacuum time say for example you are releasing in 10 different regions but you don't want to do something which will be released in 10 different regions at the same time that's very very scary right so we need to think like how we can make the progress step by step and not affecting all the regions at the same time when something goes wrong we also need to consider service infrastructure resource limits and increase them beforehand we also need to regularly monitor our resource uses and based on the resource utilization we can set alarms and take some decisions we need to increase or decrease our resources and that's all i guess